we know that we keep our programs and files on secondary storage which is non-volatile in nature. Non-volatile means that even if the power is switched off, the data is not lost. So all the programs and files are permanently stored on secondary storage and magnetic disk drives are one example of this. So in this video, we are going to take a look at the magnetic disk or the hard disk as it is commonly known. So here is a, a diagram which shows what the magnetic disk looks like inside. So it consists of these platters, these are magnetic platters placed on top of each other and each platter over here is comprising of these concentric circles which are known as tracks. So this is one track, then there would be another track and then another track and so on. So there are multiple concentric tracks on each of these platters. It, each track as you can see is divided into blocks or partitions which are referred to as sector. So each track is having multiple sectors in it and each of this platter is having these concentric tracks and sectors. All these platters they are connected together using a spindle. So the distance of a track from the spindle. So suppose if this is of radius r then the same track over here and the same track over here on each of these platter at the same radius they will form a cylinder. So the track at equidistant from the center they are referred to as one cylinder. Similarly another track at another radius r1 so this would be another track at radius r1 something like this. Now these all these tracks on various platters they would form another cylinder. We have an arm assembly which is holding these read write heads. So as we can see that this is a read write head over here and this arm assembly can move forward or backward. So they can take the read write head over a particular track. So if we want to go to this particular track then the arm assembly will move forward. So all the heads they will go to move simultaneously over that particular cylinder. So and if we want to go to a track which is over here, so then the read write assembly heads they would be taken backward. So all these arms are moving simultaneously to a particular track. Once the read write head is over a particular track so let's say it's over here and now a particular sector which is here now this is required to be read then this spindle is now going to rotate and that particular sector will be brought under the read write head so let me repeat this again let's say if we want to read this particular track and this particular sector on that track. So first the arm assembly will move in such a way forward that this read write head comes over this particular track. Once it has come over the track this spindle will now rotate so that this sector will come under the read write head and then the data can be read. So this is the basic uh, manufacturing uh, details of the hard disk. So there can be thousands of concentric cylinders in a disk drive like we said that this is one cylinder this set of whole tracks in one at one radius then there would be another cylinder at this radius another cylinder at this radius. So so many cylinders because there would be thousands of tracks so each track would be corresponding to one cylinder and each track may contain hundreds of sectors. So if this is one track over here it will it can contain hundreds of sectors over here. Each sector has a fixed size and is the smallest unit of transfer and this sector size 
may vary from 512 bytes to like nowadays we have 4 kilobyte sector sizes also. Now these disk drives when we want to refer to the address on any disk drive we are referring to it as a logical block. So the disk drive can be thought of as a one dimensional array of logical blocks and these blocks they are mapped onto the sectors of the disk. So sector 0 is the first sector this now this is convention usually this is followed but it can be like mapped in another way also. So sector 0 is the first sector of the first track on the outermost cylinder. So if this is the outermost track which will be referring or having the outermost cylinder. So the first track of this first sector of this outermost track will be referred to as sector 0 then we'll have sector 1, 2, 3 and so on and then the same sec track in the lower platter. So whatever is the lower platter over here now the same track then the sector numbers will continue from there. So sector 0 is the first sector of the first track on the outermost cylinder and then mapping proceeds in order through that track. So right like we said 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. So let's say there were 256 sectors let's say. So then after that in the outermost track of the next platter now you will have the next sector sector 257 and so on. So rest of the tracks in that cylinder will be mapped and then through rest of the cylinders from outermost to innermost. Once the outermost track have been finished in all the platters then the next innermost track will be considered then the next innermost track and so on. So this is how the mapping of the logical blocks will take place. So what is the hard disk access? How do you access the hard disk? So the first thing that we required was that the disk arm should move to the desired cylinder. So cylinder by cylinder we are referring to the track at a particular radius. So the time that is required to move this disk arm to that particular se uh, track is referred to as the seek time. And once the arm is over that track, now this spindle is rotating to bring that sector below the head. So this is referred to as the rotational latency or latency. So this is the time which is required for the desired sector to rotate to the disk head. An average latency we can consider as the time taken for half a rotation. So half rotation the time that is required for half rotation can be considered as the average latency. So let us say a disk there is a disk which is rotating the speed of that disk is 7200 rotations per minute. Okay. So that means in one, one rotation it will take 1 upon 7200 minutes this much and so if we convert this into seconds this will be 60 upon 7200 seconds. This will be the time taken for one rotation now. One rotation will take this much time. So how much half rotation will take? Half rotation will be taking into 0.5 time and this many sorry seconds now because we have already multiplied by that by 60 and if we now convert it into milliseconds by multiply again by 1000 we see that if we have a disk with 7200 rpm speed then the average latency which is the, which is the time taken for half rotation would be 4.17 milliseconds. So what is the performance of the hard disk that means how much time will be taken to transfer data from the hard disk. 
So the average access time is the average seek time plus the average latency. This is the time taken to access that particular sector. First, we have to go over that track, so the seek time, and then we have to go over that sector, so the average latency time. This gives us the average access time. So what is the average IO time, input output time? First, we have to go over that track and sector, so we need the average access time plus the controller overhead. Each hard disk has a controller, electronic controller, which controls the transfer of data between the microprocessor or the RAM and the hard disk. So whatever is the time required by that controller plus then the time that is required for the actual transfer of data over the bus. So the system bus also has some bandwidth and it requires some time to transfer data between the two devices. So now what do we have? The average access time plus the controller overhead and transfer time is how will we decide the transfer time? How much data we want to transfer? divided by whatever is the rate of transfer. That means how many bits per second that bus can transfer. So let's say we have to transfer a 4 kilo, kilobyte block. The speed of the disk is 7200 RPM. 5 milliseconds is the average seek time and 1 gigabit. Please note that this is not byte, this is bit. Byte is represented by a capital B bit is represented by a small b, 1 gigabit per second transfer rate and 0 0.1 millisecond is the controller overhead. So there are different units of time also so we have to take care of that. So we know that the average IO time will be the average access time. So average access time is the seek time plus the latency time. So we know that the seek time is 5 millisecond. What is the latency, average latency? We saw in the previous slide that for 7200 RPM, time taken for half rotation is 4.1 millisecond. So that becomes our average latency. Then the controller overhead is 0 0.1 millisecond and plus the transfer time now. So all of this is 9.27. Now we just have to see what is the transfer time. So the amount of data that has to be transferred is 4 kilobyte. 4 kilobyte if we convert it to bits first. So 4 kilo is 2 to the power of 10 into 8 bits because 1 byte has 8 bits. So this gives us 32 into 2 to the power of 10 bits. So this much amount of data has to be transferred and the rate of transfer is 1 gigabit per second which is 2 to the power of 30 bits per second. And now when you will compute this it will come out to be 0 0.031 millisecond. So now what is the average IO time to transfer this 4 kilobyte block? All the time that is required to first seek it then the rotational latency time, then the controller overhead, all of this has come in this plus the actual transfer time. So this gives us 9.301 milliseconds.